Hey there, so today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this cheap little B-Link Mini S12 into a server. Now this is an ultra low budget system that you can usually find on sale in Amazon for around $150. But what we get out of this is a really nice, very well performing CPU for not a lot of wattage here. But there are a few upgrades I'd like to do to the system before we actually go into making this into a server. Now the main upgrades that I wanna do is I want to upgrade the internal SSDs that are in here. Stock it came with a 256 gigabyte SSD and I also added in a 256 six gigabyte SATA SSD that I had just laying around extra. I'm going to be replacing both with a one terabyte M.2 and a one terabyte SATA SSD. This should give us a total of two terabytes of storage in here, which is going to be plenty for what I want to do with this specific system, because right now we're kind of in a proof of concept mode. Another thing to note is that while you're in here, you can, of course, also upgrade the RAM, but you can only go up to 16 gigabytes of RAM since that is the maximum that this CPU can address, and it is in single channel. That won't really affect performance in most tasks, really, just in the most demanding. Another thing to keep in mind, of course, is that the NVMe slot in here actually only runs in 1x speed so we're not going to be getting the full speed at all out of pretty much any ssd but that does mean that we also don't really care too much about speed as much as we care about capacity so in theory you could get some of these four terabyte m.2s off of amazon for really cheap you won't really need to worry about these slower speeds you're pretty much just going for maximum density in this case but now to actually make this into a server of course i am in Installing Open Media Vault. So I'm making a Open Media Vault install bootable drive right now using Rufus. And I'm going with Open Media Vault just because of how simple it is to use. Once you pretty much go through the entirety of the install process, you're just going to be greeted with this boot up screen. And once you go through the whole process, at the end, it will pretty much just let you know that you're ready to access it through the GUI. It's an extremely easy operating system to use, and it's extremely, extremely lightweight. And here is my dashboard for Open Media Vault. You can see here that I pretty much have multiple things configured at this point right now. What I like about Open Media Vault is that I can easily install Docker and Portainer to pretty much manage those containers for me. With a setup like this, you can pretty much do practically anything. You can do a lot of self-hosting and Open Media Vault itself actually has access to a lot of plugins. But the fact that you have access to Docker and Portainer pretty much means that you can deploy practically anything on here. Specifically, what I wanted this system for is to set up a LAN cache. And what that's going to essentially do is that by setting up my own DNS that is designed to cache any downloads from anything like Steam, Epic, EA, Xbox, pretty much any of those services, it's going to cache those downloads so that I'm not actually using my bandwidth. They're going to be on the server already, and that will distribute it amongst any other systems that try to download the game. It essentially saves me on bandwidth with because sometimes I'll actually end up downloading the same game multiple times on multiple systems and what ends up just happening is that I end up using up all my bandwidth and it will affect the experience of other people on the network if I'm just transferring it from a local server then it's not using up any of that bandwidth now one of the main reasons that I wanted to use open media vault is because of just how easy it is to set up portainer and get to using it here now portainer is fantastic for installing dockers especially because with the right configuration you can get access to a bunch of pre-made templates for some of the most popular self-hosting apps. So it makes it extremely easy to set up something like a Jellyfin server, a Plex server. If you use Sonar, Radar, or any of those, you can pretty much set up pretty much anything that you would want from here, and it makes it extremely easy. But as you can see, there's actually a lot that you can do with a server this small. There's actually a lot of potential here because a lot of these containers really don't need a lot of resources as you can see with mine i'm pretty much right now just running the land cache and a jellyfin server and this doesn't really end up stressing out the system at all the operating system itself is extremely lightweight and because everything is running in containers they're really only using as many resources as they need and a lot of the times they don't really need much and what this means is that we're also able to take advantage of the superior efficiency of this system at full load it's only consuming 15 watts and and most of the time it's just idling at anywhere between five to seven watts so this means you can have an ultra efficient 
home server. While there are other systems that compete with it in terms of performance for not that much more money, at the price point that it hits, you can pretty much get a home server up and running for not a lot of money. And really, one of your biggest costs is always going to be storage. So the less you can spend on the system, the more you can put into the actual thing you're going to use, which is going to be storage most of the time. A lot of the time, people really seem to overestimate how much they think they really need out of a server. You might think you need six cores and 12 threads and 32 gigabytes of RAM and you need to have as much PCIe expansion as you can possibly have but then you realize what are the things that you really want to run a file server maybe a Plex or Jellyfin server maybe you want to do torrenting maybe you want to self-host your own music server pretty much any of these things don't really require that much in terms of hardware and you can save yourself some pretty solid amounts of money by using a cheaper system like this especially one that is as efficient as this and if i were you i wouldn't even be looking at this specific model i would be looking at the model with the n100 the pro version of this because you get some nice spec bumps for just a bit more money and it's going to give you a little bit more of a flexible server that you could eventually even start to do some more advanced things because of the fact that you now have the two ethernet ports so it's definitely something to consider there but overall i'm very very happy with the results of using this little system as a server and it's going to become very, very handy as I continue my testing. So I'll see you guys next time.